All right, a pleasant morning to everyone, to our faculty, staff, students, alumni, partners, and distinguished guests. Welcome to the anniversary celebration of the UPLB College of Public Affairs and Development. This year, we are celebrating the 24th year since CIPAF's creation in 1998. I am Sam De La Santos, Head of Knowledge Management Office, and I will be your, today, uh, your moderator for today's opening ceremonies of this three-part anniversary celebration. With the theme Forging Leaders for Institutional Governance and Development, CIPA fully recognizes its vision to become an academic institution with distinctive excellence in development studies and governance in support of national development goals in the agriculture and rural sectors and communities in transition. With that, this year's celebration has been benevolently distributed into three Fridays to offer everyone the venue and time to discuss important governance and development issues of today. And today, January 28th, we will have the main celebration of the anniversary, and we have invited a well-known speaker to discuss about our leaders and the elections. Meanwhile, next Friday, February 4th, we will have a policy forum on Mandana's ruling and our local leaders. And on February 7, the third part for our closing event, we will be having a learning event on the role of higher education institutions in forging leaders. Our program for today and next Friday will be in conjunction with the university's UPLB Sahalalan 2022. Before we proceed with our program, we will just have a few reminders. For our panelists this morning, we would like to request you to please mute your microphones during the program, except during the part for which you will speak. And for all our participants, you may use the chat box for your greetings and comments. For those in Zoom, you may key in your questions later in our open forum using the Q&A box. Please keep all conversations equitable and done with good intentions. This online event will also be recorded and is currently being shown on uh, live at CPAF's Facebook page. Now to officially start our program, I call on everyone to pay respect as we sing the national anthem. Again, welcome everyone to CPAP's 24th anniversary celebration, Forging Leaders for Institutional Governance and Development. And now to set things on the right track, we will have no less than the Dean of the College of Public Affairs and Development, Dr. Rowena Diti Bakongis, to deliver her opening remarks. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, everyone. To our Chancellor, Dr. Jose Amacho, our very energetic chancellor, our guest speaker, Dr. Claire Carlos, my colleagues, students, alumni, our retired CIPAF personnel and administrators, guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to welcome all of you to the first part of the 24th CIPAF anniversary celebration. CIPAF is very proud to celebrate its 24th anniversary celebration as it continues to develop human and institutional capacities in the areas of governance, local development policy, 
and community development. With the same forging leaders for institutional governance and development, the three-part anniversary celebration tackle issues that directly affects good governance and development, election, decentralization, and capacity development. Today's topic is about elections. Electoral participation is an important aspect in promoting good governance, which relates to political and institutional processes and outcomes that seek to bring about sustainable development. Good governance encompasses continuous drive to promote civic education, enable people to form informed opinions, freely express them, respect others' opinions, and develop capacities to influence and participate in decision-making, in development, democratic platforms, and interventions that promote the common good. Good governance requires good elections, which require electoral participation of an informed citizenry. Today's topic is part of UPLB's trust to promote voter literacy and raise awareness about processes, strategies, personalities, and important matters related to local and national elections. I enjoin everyone to actively take part in today's topic as we listen to an eminent professor who will expertly discuss the significance of upcoming elections and choosing leaders that can lead us to a sustainable and more resilient future. The anniversary celebration is an opportunity to recognize our outstanding personnel who have significantly contributed to the efficiency and effectiveness of the college. We also thank the members of the college who rendered years of service and those who have retired from service. We hope that you will be inspired by, by their dedication to the college and the university. I am very happy to see all of you and I wish everyone a productive learning event. I also hope to see you on February 4 and 11 for our other learning events that seek to promote improved understanding of how we can participate in the creation of a better community. Welcome and thank you for celebrating with us CPAP's 24th anniversary. All right, thank you very much, Dean Bakongis, for your encouraging and enthusiastic message. I hope everybody was uh, able to get that same passion from Dean Bakongis. For this morning's ceremony, let's also hear from UPLB's dear uh, Chancellor, Dr. Jose V. Camacho, Jr. Thanks, uh, Samantha. <laughs> Uh, but let me first uh, greet uh, the College of uh, Public Affairs and Development, uh, the Dean of uh, CIPAF, Dr. Rowena Bakongis, and to the Executive Committee, the faculty members, the researchers, extension staff, the administrative staff of uh, CIPAF, to our uh, students and alumni. Kawai kawai po kayo dyan. I can see the names of our former students in development studies. And uh, to our guest speaker, the very dynamic uh, professor, Claire uh, Carlos. Magandang umaga po, Ma'am Claire. It is my uh, pleasure to address all of you today as we celebrate the 24th anniversary of uh, CPAF. But allow me to first begin by congratulating the entire uh, CIPAF constituency on this uh, very milestone. Uh, I'd like to pay respect and honor to the previous deans, the founding deans and the associate uh, deans and uh, administrators of uh, CIPAF. I also wish to extend my uh, congratulations to the outstanding personnel of uh, CIPAF in this year, and the retirees for being the, the epitome of honor and excellence of this uh, esteemed 
uh, college. As you all know, Sipaf is my uh, second home. I taught uh, development uh, studies, development theory and practice. Uh, we have uh, established or instituted the PH development studies, the various courses, cognate and uh, elective courses in development studies uh, during the time of uh, Dean uh, uh, Rolla when I co-chaired the uh, PH development studies uh, committee. And then when I was a dean of the uh, graduate school, we were able to institute another uh, area of specialization uh, that will uh, capacitate the Department of Education uh, uh, executives that is on the area of education and development. So I'm very happy about this uh, milestone that CIPAF has reached. Now, this year's anniversary, as uh, Dean Wang has mentioned, bears the theme Forging Leaders for Institutional Governance and Development. Ang bigat po. <laughs> Napakabigat po ng theme. And this theme could not be uh, timelier. In less than four months from now, we will once again uh, head to the uh, polling station to elect our next leaders for the national and uh, local offices. Excited na ba kayo? <laughs> Napanood niyo na ba ang mga interviews? <laughs> sino ang mga game na? Sino ang hindi pa game? At uh, sino na ang mga tinatarayan? At uh, di ba? I, I, I just watched the uh, interview of Ma'am Claire uh, with the other station. And dako talagang napatas ang uh, kilay ko when I was hearing Ma'am Claire about his commentaries on why should uh, interviews be conducted with no nonsense. Uh, <laughs> Kaya I'm very honored that we have Ma'am Claire today in this inaugural conversation. A, the infatigable, a no-nonsense geopolitical analyst a respected and sought-after political analyst in the country. She's a former uh, uh, president of the National Defense College, and I hope that uh, uh, we can get uh, Mom Claire uh, her expertise and become a visiting professor or to give uh, lectures uh, for our students at the College of Public Affairs. So she will share us uh, today uh, her wisdom and, of course, her wit about our leaders and the election. And I'm certain that uh, our takeaways from Mam Claire uh, could help the university in implementing our very own uh, UPLB Sahalalan uh, 2022 initiative. I signed the administrative order constituting the uh, committee, and one of the committee members uh, here is being represented by uh, CPAF. Uh, through uh, uh, the representation of Assistant Professor Mayo Grace uh, Amit. I hope that we can uh, translate the knowledge that we learn from this learning activity into action. We must not uh, only understand why institutional governance and uh, development is needed. We must also educate others about the very basic concepts of good governance. And the coming years will be very crucial for all of us. We are a country sorely hit by the global pandemic and struggling to get back to its feet. We need competent and compassionate leaders with a concrete plan for our nation's post-COVID recovery. As what Ma'am Claire says in uh, her interview, hindi pwede yung pa-cute-cute lang. Ano ito? Game, sh game show? Sabi niya. Nahinig ko yun kay Ma'am Claire. So I hope that today's program will be educational for all of us on the road towards a well-informed and discerning uh, Filipino electorate for the coming uh, national elections. Once again, congratulations to SIPA, to Dean Wang, to your administration. And may this anniversary, uh, anniversary celebration be a memorable and meaningful. Maraming salamat. Parating uh, magingat po tayong lahat at uh, mabuhay.
Maraming salamat din po, uh, Chancellor Camacho. We are very privileged to hear our heartwarming. And tama po kayo, our theme this uh, morning is, uh, not just this morning, but the three-part anniversary special of SIPAF is mabigat or heavy and yet timely. And as the same with uh, Chancellor Camacho, I also watched a few interviews and it's going to be interesting to hear personally from Dr. Carlos later. Now we are... We have 140 participants here on Zoom, and uh, we have yet to um, check. Uh, we have around 22 participants on FB Live. So if you have friends who would like to watch this and was not able to um, register on Zoom, they can watch this on CIPAF's Facebook page. Now, moving forward with our program, to which I believe everybody has been waiting after the, uh, the opening remarks and the uh, um, welcoming remarks from our Dean and our Chancellor. Uh, I believe uh, everybody's excited for this part. So now we will have, um, oh, first we will have a photo op with our uh, Chancellor and the rest of our guests this morning of our panelists. So if, uh, if you can please open your camera for a quick photo session with our Chancellor. Um, to our technical support, tell us when you're ready. And okay na po lahat. Okay po. One. Ah, G, ikaw. I think. Ah, so. Okay, go. One, two, three. Okay na po. Uh, one more, I think, uh, G, uh, or Tessa. Um, I saw someone open her camera. One, two, three. All right. Thank you so Hi, much. Apo. Thank you. So much to our program committee who has been so busy since last year in preparing for our anniversary. Now, uh, we will have our... Um, the Director of the Center for Strategic Planning and Policy Studies, Dr. Eileen V. Lapitan, to, un to introduce our speaker. Thank you, Sam. Good morning, everyone. Uh, CPAP's 24th founding anniversary celebration themed uh, Forging Leaders for Institutional Governance and Development coincides with an important concern of our time as the country uh, will soon uh, elect its next leader. Uh, this is why we are delighted and honored to have one of the Philippines' respected academics in political science to speak on the importance of honing leaders who can be at the forefront of our endeavors toward development. You might have seen her... Uh, in uh, her interviews in the media, and perhaps you're already following her on Facebook. Well, she is definitely a lot more than that, as we will see this morning. Dr. Clarita Carlos has been a professor of political science at the University of the Philippines for 55 years. She is also teaching in the Ateneo de Manila University and San Beda University. She was the first female civilian president of the National Defense College of the Philippines. She has written on political parties, elections, bureaucratic reform, and democratic deficits. Well, that's among others that she has written on. She is an expert in foreign policy, defense and security, geopolitics, and climate change. So for over 50 years, she has served as consultant at the Philippine Congress, various government and non-government agencies, and also the private sector. She heads the Asia Pacific Institute of Climate Change Mitigation and Adaptation Foundation and the Strat Search Foundation. Dr. Carlos received her Bachelor of Science in Foreign Service at the University of the Philippines, where she also earned her master's and PhD degrees in political science. She completed her postdoctoral studies in political psychology as Fulbright Visiting Fellow at the Cornell University. She, is, she also did her postdoctoral studies on comparative foreign policy analysis as a senior Fulbright Fellow at the University of California, Los Angeles. And so friends and colleagues here in SIPAF and uh, beyond, I'm, I'm very pleased to um, um, invite you to welcome Dr. Clarita Carlos. Ma'am? Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. And um, 
congratulations to the CIPAF on your 24th uh, anniversary and uh, onwards to this, the centenary, which is uh, 100 years from now where I won't be around. So thank you so much, uh, Chancellor Camacho and uh, Dean Rowena. Uh, yes, I'm always ready to be one of your uh, faculty, visiting professor, uh, whatever the title might be, uh, to share uh, you know, my learnings over the past 55 years. I'm now 75 years old and I started teaching when I was 20. So, you know, you do your math and it's like that. But uh, as you can see, I'm hale and hearty and, uh, you know, I'm raring to uh, really continue helping our country uh, reach uh, a better Philippines. Porny as it may sound, I don't want a Philippines which I have experienced, which my grandchildren and this generation will also suffer, suffer from. What I have prepared uh, for everyone is really uh, to address the main theme of the conference, the three um, three part conference, and that is to link together the three concepts, uh, which are big words, by the way. So you have the concept of leadership, the concept of governance and development. How can you crochet them together? How can you link them together so that you are talking of only one narrative, one story? Well, of course, as usual, we have the corny definition of terms, okay? So we talk of leadership. Just what do we mean when we talk of leadership? We're talking of it as an institution. We're not talking of leaders. We're not talking of a junta. We're not talking of an individual person called the premier or a chancellor or whatever the title might be. Leadership is a role. And that role means, what do we mean by leadership? This would be one person or a collective which can commit the resources of the country, which can set the agenda of the country, which can set the trajectory of the country by identifying its domestic and foreign concerns. So that's the concept of leader. You know, not one of us, you know, yung nagtitanda ng maruya dyan sa tabi-tabi o kaya ng taho, or not denigrating them, can commit the resources of the country. But when you have the chief executive, the president of the Republic of the Philippines, he or she will have the full authority to commit the resources of the country. And we're talking of human resources, 110 million of us, and non-human resources, meaning that we are one of the highly mineralized countries in the world, you know, chromite, gold, silver, what have you. So that is the concept of leadership. Anyone or a junta or a collective who can commit the resources of the country. Now, what about governance? Governance is, if you will notice, it is a, a gerund, you know? It is a, a type of decision-making which happens from day to day where the leadership is able to put together the goals, the agenda for building a, a nation, the goals and the human and the non-human resources. So that is called also in the security and defense community a strategy. A strategy is when you do, when you put together the human and non-human resources towards particular goals. And that is the meaning of governance, the day-to-day -day administration of things. And the third concept is development. I'm sure if you look at the literature, it has 10,000 definitions. But we will just stick to one simple definition, which is by development, you are talking about less capability to more capability. For what end? To improve the human condition. That's the only thing that matters to us as scholar scientists. We are here. Now, of course, we are here to do research. And of course, to get our ranks from instructor to full professor 12. But we are also here to change the world. Isn't it? So I'm sure all of you are on the same page with me in regard to these definitions, and you will have uh, a chance to contest this or to challenge me during the Q&A. Okay, what have I, uh, uh, you know, usually when I prepare for a lecture, even if kahit naglalaba pa ako dyan o nagtatanim, nagdideleg, kinoconceptualize ko na sa isip ko, ano kaya ang sasabihin ko dito sa aking mga colleagues sa UPLB? 
so that by the time I write the, them down on one piece of paper and outline, which is what I usually do, and I think most of you will uh, do this in your lectures, you just go to this already conceptualized and just pull them together so I, that I have a one, one story, once upon a time and they live happily ever after. This is how I constructed my lecture. Okay, after we're done with the definition of terms, let us ask the question, why do we have elections? Why are we have elections? Because we are in a liberal democratic framework. We are not in an authoritarian regime where somebody can be there like, you know, for how many years and until he dies and he becomes the, the leader. We are not under an authoritarian regime. We're under in a liberal democratic framework. Now, where did we get this? As usual, nangopia na naman tayo sa America, who had been our colonizers for 50 years. Pag tinignan yung constitution natin, kopyang-kopya natin yung mga nasa Amerika na hindi naman akma sa atin. Pero, you know, that's another subject area. So that meron kang two-chamber, eh, hindi ka naman federal system. So hindi mo alam saan ba itong mga senators na tulululugar rin sa sarili nila. Actually, wala silang lugar. Pero, you know, that's another concern which we can address in another forum. But yes, the liberal democratic framework came from a political theorist and his name is John Locke. John Locke says, siya yung father ng ating liberal democracy, as he is the father of the liberal democracy of the United States of America. And John Locke says, there is a social contract between us, the governed, and the governors, our leader. And that social contract says, you have to give us the optimum quality of human life that you governors uh, are there to lead us to. You are there because we gave you the authority to be there. That is the notion of representative democracy. You represent what we need, what we desire. And therefore, because you represent us, you have to give us the best quality of health, education, and the means to confront the consequences of climate change. This is the nature of the social contract. And therefore, there are certain rules of the game in the social contract, majority rule, meaning, have you asked yourself why we are always paying attention to the highest number? Like, you know, in this election, whoever gets the highest number, it's 99 versus 100, yung nakakuha 100, panalo siya, no? Minsan nga, pareho lang silang 100, tapos nagtotoast-toast ka ng coin, wow, sino to ang ano, manalo dito? Kasi, there, of course, if you read the... One of my books on elections, meron talagang nagtutose lang ng coin dahil pareho naman yung nakuha nilang boto. Kanya, guys, ha, if you think that your one vote is not, you know, wala lang, one vote lang, yes, it matters. And it matters a lot. Oh, So why majority rule? Because all things being equal, chiteris paribus, no one will vote to harm himself. Tama ba? Why am I going to vote to harm himself? Parang loko-loko yata ako. I'm a stupid person. I will usually vote to benefit myself. So you put together all these votes of 65 million qualified voters, yan ang makikita mo dulo sa May 9 natin. Diba? Where we are filling up a very long ballot to indicate whom we are going to choose to govern us. So to go back, the social contract is a contract between the governor and the governed. Now when that contract is breached, if the governor does not deliver on what we desire and what we hope, we elect them out. So we say by impeachment and by recall, alis ka na dyan ha, kasi itong pinromesa mo, tapos ito pa pinromesa mo, ilaway lang. Hello? So by impeachment, by recall, we kick them out even before the end of their tenure. And what is very um, enlightening about the Lakian philosophy is there is a right to revolution. I know yung ating uh, anti-terror law will not allow me to discuss this, but yes, I'm going to allow it within the rubric of academic freedom. Why will I not talk about the right to revolution? Nandiyan yung kay John Locke for just por santo. No? Ba't naman ako matatakot na ako ipipress at huhulihin when, hello, ang difference ng UP student and a, and you know, non-UP student is that tayo, we allow our students to think freely and fettered, no? Ako nga, ang dami kong mga makukulit yung student, hindi pa nga ako nakatapos ng sentence ko, nagtataas na ng kamay. Ito, hoy, tumigil ka muna, patapusin mo muna yung predicate ko, ha? Di ba? Ang dami mga mayabang sa atin. Mayabang talaga tayo, pero may pinapagmayabang naman. Pero, yeah, wag naman tayo magmayabang, you know, assertive, not arrogant, no? So, yes, 
It is only in the UP that we allow the student to challenge the professor. Pero huwag ka lang nagpapakyute, ha? You challenge me with compelling arguments. Otherwise, I'm sure makakamura ako sa'yo. No? And that is why when I teach in other universities, you know, Chancellor Camacho, <laughs> nagulat nagulat yung mga estudyante na tell them, okay, bring it on. Sino mag-question sa akin, ha? Please question me. Kasi, oh, ah, we're all equal before the truth, whatever that looks like. Now. Mom, hindi po kami nagko-question ng aming guru. Sabi ko, eh, mga tatangan ninyo. Kanya nyo ako iniimbita dito sa mga ano, universities na to. Eh, dinadala ko yung UP spirit dito. Question me. I want to be challenged, you know. Malay mo, may nabasa ka mas maganda kaysa nabasa ko. Di ba? That's the nature of uh, of learning, di ba? Yung mga guru naman na ayaw magpa-question, eh, I don't know, please kill yourself already. O wala kang lugar sa university. Di ba? Hello? Okay, ah. Oh. Okay. I teach a graduate course on elites in politics. And baka gusto nyo din yan na ituro dyan, na talagang tuwan-tuwa ako nga tinuturo yung kurso na yan. Kasi, naku, pag nakita nyo yung opisina ko dito sa faculty center, Alam mo ko, hoarder ako eh. Ang hinuhoard ko, yung mga autobiographies baga. Oh? And uh, yun ang crush ko na si Vladimir Putin. Hindi nga ako makahanap ng kanyang ano, ng mga biography, autobiography. Kaya humingi na lang ako sa ambassador natin ng kanyang cute na ano, kalendaryo. Ayun, nasa opisina ko. No? And uh, yeah, Vladimir Putin is something else. Anyhow, uh, when I teach the course on elites in politics, siyempre nalulunod tayo sa mga types of leaders. Sabi ko, putres, ano ba to ito na lang bang gagawin natin buong semester, mag-talk about types of leaders? But one thing, we have zeroed in on something, which of course I have a quarrel with, you know, many, many of my colleagues at the Ateneo University, the concept of transactional and transformative leadership. You know, when you conceptualize these two concepts and you can look at the literature and I will not have time to discuss them at length right now, these two cannot be seen as opposites. They are not opposites. In fact, they are part of a continuum. Always in the science of political life, it is very, very difficult to take extreme positions. There is no left. There is no right. You know, there is no unitary system. There is no federal system. It is just a continuum. It's the same here with transactional and transformative leadership. I always challenge my colleagues. Can you please tell me, saan nag-uumpisa yung transactional leadership at saan siya bigla na siyang nagiging transformative? If you cannot answer that question, then they cannot be used for classification. Hindi ba classification natin ang rule natin? Dapat yung mailalagay mo sa isang box, hindi mo mailalagay sa isang box. And therefore, boxes are not really useful frameworks for explanation. It is really a continuum. No? And what do you find when you look at the empirical evidence on leadership? Every leader does transaction. Yan ang si Pope na nasa Vatican, I'm sure nakikipag-transact din siya. Transaction simply means, I do one thing for you, Chancellor, you do something else for me. Whatever that means. So, no, it can be something, you know... Um, uh, ephemeral, it can be something material, etc. But every political action is transactional. So I challenge anybody to talk to me about transformative leadership as if transformative leadership is something which is like the cousin of Mother Teresa. No. We as a scholar scientists, you know, when you cannot demonstrate it on the ground, do not use the classification kasi hindi mo siya madidefende. Magdi-defend mo ba transformative leadership? No, so shoot down kita. Sasabihin ko, somewhere during the leadership tenure, the tenure of the leadership, he is able to transform society into what he wants it to be. But it is not as if there is a beginning and ending. It is all part of the leadership process. It is not anything which is a definite or a unique aspect of leadership. Yeah, but let us not dwell on this, but I'm sure, you know, I can discuss this uh, at length with anybody. And as I said, always the test is empirical evidence on the ground. Kung walang evidence yan, chismis lang yan, laway lang yan. And of course, I don't like to waste my time talking about, you know, ephemeral things. And uh, let's just go to the Vatican or whatever if we want to talk of these things. But no, we're talking about empirical evidence. You're looking at something which I can see, I can smell, I can feel. Outside that, I don't know what kind of science you're talking about. All right. Why is it important that during the interviews, 
We subject those who are threatening to lead us. Ilan na nga ba sila? Parang pito o walo na nga sila. Nalimutan ko ng bilangin sa karamihan. Ano? Why is it that we always put importance on how they're going to deal with things in a situation of crisis? Why? Because we are now in a very, very complicated world. Hindi nila ako pwedeng bitbitin bilang consultant nila on foreign policy and defense and security in a crisis situation. Why? That's the reason why we have to depend on their innate intelligence or their total lack of it. That's the reason why we're saying, ikaw ha, wag mong memorize naman yung sagot mo. At kayo mga networks, wag naman kayo magbigay-bigay ng advanced question dahil siyempre, tulad ng estudyante, meron din silang kodigo at kodigo. And we'll talk about four syllables, five syllable words. Hindi naman naiintindihan what it means, you know? So, gusto ko off the cuff, from the top of their heads, either it's there or it's not there. Parang pag-ibig, di ba? Ang pag-ibig, huwag mo akong pilitin, ha? Either it's there or it's not there. Talino, ganun din. If it's there, it's there. If it's not there, sorry lang, it's not there. So, in a crisis situation, hindi mo pwedeng bitbitin si Dr. Camacho bilang iyong consultant dahil you will have to rely on your own innate intelligence. And that is why when I teach the course in elites in politics, I pay attention to personality. Very few political scientists pay attention to personality, but they matter, and they matter a lot. No one has been alive here during the Cuban Missile Crisis in the 60s. The Cuban Missile Crisis nearly led to the destruction of the world, the Third World War. But what happened, this would be missiles in Cuba were all directed at the major cities of the United States of America. And they were discovered by, of course, the CIA, the Intel people. And Nikita Khrushchev and John Kennedy had to be talking in a highly crisis situation. And then after a while, they stopped talking. And we thought that was the beginning of the end of the world. But John Kennedy, and this was dissected by a political scientist, Graham Allison, whose PhD dissertation won an award in the essence of decision. And he said, if it were not for John Kennedy's astute and wily leadership, wala na tayo lahat dito. Kasi nagkaroon na ng nuclear war between the two superpowers at the time, the USSR with its proxy nation, Cuba, which is at the belly of the US, if you look at your geography, and the USA. Of course, you know, conditions have changed. Vladimir Putin is trying to revive the USSR, you know, Ukraine, Crimea, Georgia. But, you know, he might have a different notion of what um, revived USSR might look like. But that's another matter, and that may be, you know, a subject of another full-blown lecture, which is not material right now to what we're talking about. But what we're talking about is that, yes, personality matters. Because at the end of the day, when the leadership already has exhausted all the bureaucratic uh, and uh, authoritative structures within his realm, within the rubric of what he can do as chief executive and president of the Republic of the Philippines, he has to rely on his personal attributes. That's why personal attributes are very, very important. Is this person a high risk stake? Taker, ito ba yung teka, teka, teka nga? Pa, paano ba yan? Ako, paano? You know, nag -imo emoji ka din eh, samantalang nino susunog na itong ating mga major cities. Doesn't work that way. The test of a leadership is a leadership in a crisis situation. That is the real test. Makikita mo yung kanyang still, um, still countenance na hindi siya natitinag. No? So, andyan na yung China. No, nagpalubog siya ng isang bangka na parang limampu na ano, Filipino fisherman ay nalubog at namatay. Anong gagawin mo? I'm sure hindi mo tatawagin si Carlos. Ay, oh, Carlos, Dr. Carlos, ano bang gawin natin dyan? No, you will have to rely on your own innate sense of anong strategy ang gawin natin sa China dahil pinalubog niya yung pitong, ano, 50 na fishermen dyan sa contested South China Sea. These are the kinds of crisis situation that the leadership will have to confront with. You cannot have somebody there who is intellectually vacuous. I'm sorry to use those harsh terms, but yes, you must have somebody there who has the intelligence to deal with a very complicated world. 
Last night, doon sa ABS-CBN, I don't know if you watch that, ang tanong ko doon sa mga senatorials, if we are invited to be a member of the Quad, you know, Australia, India, Japan, and the U.S., mag-join ba tayo in a collective security alliance? And unfortunately, hindi ko nabanggitin kung sino yung nandun. Wala dyan sa tinanong ko. These are senators who are going to ratify treaties even when we join that alliance. Una, hindi nila alam ko ano yung quad, no? Dahil hindi nagbabasa. Akala nila nagpapakyut lang sila dun sa Senate. No? And then pangalawa, hindi nila nakita yung implication ng joining a collective security alliance. When you join a collective security alliance, against ka na kay China. Kasi bubungguin mo na siya eh, no? Doon sa ating ally across the Pacific Ocean called the United States of America, across the Indian Ocean called India, and further down, Australia, and of course, New North is Japan. And Japan is taking the leadership position. Why do the senatorials and the chief executive for that matter, the presidentials, no need to know about these things? Because they are the ones that are really so material to our politics right now. It is not just something which concerns me because I'm teaching the geopolitics. It's something that concerns all of us. Why? Look at your map. Sino yung nakadapang country na ang nasa east niya ay Pacific Ocean, nasa west niya yung South China Sea? ng China. Eh di ba tayo, layo-layo nga ng Okinawa dyan, no? ang layo ng South Korea, tayo ang nasa gitna niyan. You know, Chancellor Camacho, no ako yung nasa National Defense College pa, about 20 years ago, siyempre minsan binibit-bit nila ako sa Hawaii no? para makipag-negotiate dyan sa mga Amerikano. Eh ako talaga, talagang ako siguro eh, genuinely mataray talaga ako and I would, ano, I would really call them out on, teka muna, Ba't ba? Ang nyayabang ninyo na yung tubig ninyo kukunin nyo pa sa Guam, ang layo-layo ng Guam. Meron mo naman kaming tubig ah. This is what we can offer you. You know, unfortunately, yung isang team leader namin, sabi niya sa ano, and he is still a, an officer ngayon, ano, official. Sabi niya, hoy, sabihin mo naman kang kay Dr. Carlos, huwag siyang object ng object sa negotiation kasi gusto ko nang umuwi. Kung sampalin ko kaya ito. He did not even have the balls to tell me na pinadaan pa niya sa kanyang aid. Nasabi mo nga niya kay Dr. Carlos, wag object ng object. Siyempre na ba object ako? Bakit? Gusto mo na lang hawak ako na tayo sa amin, ng, ano, ng ilong sa Amerikano, ng, ng ilong sa, ng mga Amerikano. Yes, 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 yes. So guys, ah, remember, everything and anything that we agree with, it is because our locals and our national leaders have agreed to it. Natandaan niyo yung ano yung joint uh, marine uh, exploration na Gloria Arroyo agreed with secret yan dati and what does it mean it means that China can map the seabed in the Philippine rice and in the South China Sea what does it mean to map the seabed syempre malalaman mo na ano ba yung nandiraan hindi yung mga palaka lang yung mga pating syempre binamap mo yung seabed for the loads of minerals which are there and we stupid people, we agreed to that secret agreement. I know, kasi si Harry Roque, estudyante ko, nagkakanta iyak yan, punta dito sa ano, bahay ko sa, ano, sa UP. Habi niya na, oh, ma'am, nakita mo ba itong, ano, itong uh, agreement na to na sikreto? Guess what, Chancellor? Alam mo ba yan na silip ng Vietnam? Nung masilip ng Vietnam? O sige, sali ka na. Kaya tatlo ngayon yung secretory dyan. <laughs> Why are we doing secret agreements? Are we not stupid people, you know? I mean, kalkalin niyo yung ano, kasaysayan niyan. And I'm, uh, naku, matuto at mayayamot ka yan sa ginaga. Oh, I mean, the enemy, tayo yung enemy sa, ka, sa katangahan natin. So, nag-allow tayo dyan sa, sa China na i-map out ang ating seabed. And China right now is saying, sabi ni Wang Yi, oh, hala, hala, ha, yung ginawa nating seven artificial islands niya, nagawa tayo ng joint development. Again, we as a scholar scientist, we ask, Oh, I didn't know when. Uh, definition of terms, please. Alam mo naman yan, nasa thesis namin, nasa dissertation, na, 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 chapter one. Defini ano ba ibig sabihin ng joint development? Mukhang ikaw ang magsishape ng architecture ng aming security. And we stupid people, if we sign up to that, wag tayong mag, magsabi-sabi later on, oh, eh, tagilid kasi, no? eh, ba't ka nag-sign? Hindi ka ba katangahan mo naman yun? Wag tayong mag-sign. Yung mga ginagamit na lupa, di ba, para pantambak dyan sa Seven Artificial Islands sa contested South China Sea. Saan ba nanggaling yan? Di ba, sa Sambales, yung mountain ay inyo ni level of ninyo. Palagay mo ba yung mga Chinese makakakuha yan ng isang pasong lupa? 
Now, without the collusion of the local executives, tell me, nothing will happen in the Philippines unless your executives agree to this thing. So, wag tayo magmaang-maanga, no? I'm glad you address the issue, Eileen, of the role of the uh, local executives dahil yan ang second ano, round ninyo, di ba? The Mandanas, which is a very, very dangerous ruling, by the way. And wag na ako sumausaw dyan dahil I'm sure meron kayong ibang resource person dyan. Okay, so to go back to why personality matters, I have a favorite framework for studying political leaders, and it has not only explanatory power, explanatory appeal, it has predictive value. It is called the operational code. I know this is one big lecture already, but the operational code, to cut to the chase, simply maps out the philosophical and the instrumental um, belief system of a political leader. If you can map that out, then you have a predictive capability, not so much you know, to predict A to Z, but to predict maybe from A to E. Though that given that I have mapped out the belief system of this leader, more likely he's going to act this way. When I did my uh, visit of the political psychologist for my first uh, Fulbright, Alexander George was one of my choices. And Alexander George was at Stanford University. Fred Greenstein was another choice, and he was at Princeton University. Ang ginawa ko kasi sa Fulbright ko, na Chancellor, pinili ko yung guro. I really didn't care about the school. Asan yung guro na gusto ko, who is an expert in political psychology? And the third one was Richard Ripple, who was an educational psychologist at Cornell University. Alam nyo naman noon, snail mail, di ba? Hintay-hintay ka dito sa post office natin. Ang unang sumagat sa akin, Cornell. Let's sempre nagtatatalon ako sabi ko accept accept agad. Do you know sa next day andiyan naman nagdating naman yung mail ng Princeton at saka Stanford. Of course, wala na akong mga could have been should have been etc. But yes. You know, um if I had worked with Alexander George and I had met him when he was about to retire, he was telling me, sabi niya, "Clarita, could you please help me uh, redesign this operational code because this was designed by Western political scientists. And immediately nakita ko dun sa operational code, walang item and loss of face. Alam mo yung chancellor yung kahihiyan? Hindi mo makikita yun eh. Kasi yung mga Western world, wala naman silang konsepto ng kahihiyan. Sabi ko, alam mo may kulang yung operational code mo. Kasi the leaders will go to war dahil sa kahihiyan. Loss of face, di ba? Eh, ko nga ba kung yun ang translation ng kahihiyan? Loss of face, yung pagkawala ng mukha, I don't know. Basta I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. And that is the beauty of collaboration between and among scientists in the world. You know, the collaboration is in fact the one that will lead us to a better world. And I always say, in the South China Sea conflict, the issues there, it is not the diplomats and the politicians who will manage or resolve the issue. Who will resolve it? The marine scientists. No? It is they who will treat the whole uh, Karagatan as one ecosystem. They will not talk about territoriality or, uh, or, ter or sovereignty. They will only talk about one ecosystem. And I remembered many years ago, I was the first speaker in Tokyo. And my paper was all about that. That is the scientists who will impact in fact, present the solution to the South China Sea issue. Ano ginawa? Nag-uumpisa pa lang ako magsalita, taas na ng taas ng kamay yung what uh, uh, turned out to be a PLA general, no? People's Liberation Army ng China. Sabi niya, no, no, Dr. Carlos cannot read her paper because she is internationalizing the conflict. And because that was a round table ng mga iba-ibang uh, countries. Uh, so the Japanese, as usual, ayaw niya mag -rule. So pinarol niya ako, sabi niya, oh, Dr. Carlos, what is your pleasure? Sabi ko, Putres, I wrote this paper as a political scientist. I just have that fancy title, President of the National Defense College. College. I wrote this as a scholar scientist. So please, let me read my paper. Let me present my paper on the functional cooperation in the South China Sea. Tapos naisip ko, ibang hirap-hirap makakuha ng travel authority. Putres, hirap-hirap na makakuha ng travel authority. Tapos hindi mo ako pababasahin ng papel ko. Anyway, pinabasa ako. Aba, pagkatapos ko mabasa niya, alam mo yung PLA general, umiikot siya doon sa table. Hinawakan ng kamay ko, sabi niya, Dr. Carlos, I like what you're saying. Sabi ko, tignan mo na, kanina, ayaw mo kong pasalitain. Eh, makinig ka. No? 
why is this anecdote important and cute? Si ang China ganyan. Pukpukin mo siya ng pukpukin ng pukpukin hanggang ma-realize na you want to be a superpower, abide by international law. Otherwise, gawa ka ng sarili mong international law. Diba? Okay. I'm going, I'm now uh, bringing this to a close, our discussion. I know I can discuss so much more. But, two more points. Why is the election of the chief executive so pivotal to our political life? Because the chief executive, the president of the Republic of the Philippines, when he is sworn in to office, will appoint more than 5,000 officials who are all decision makers from the heads of the department, the USEC, the ASEC, na nagpo-proliferate siya, parang may epidemic ng USEC and ASEC, eh, directors, etc., who are all decision makers and who will change your life for the next 2,000 days of their political tenure. That is why the chief executive, we must know who they are, what kind of decision-making uh, style they have, who are they in crisis situations? Huh? Because the chief executive, we have endowed him with so much authority that they can practically change the direction of our political life. And lastly, why do we need constitutional reforms? You know, for the past, oh, I don't know how long ago, 1989, kami, kasama ko si Pepe Abueba, si Nene Pimentel, yaan, si Fred Tajar, Ikot-ikot kami sa buong archipelago, just conducting political education. Once upon a time, federal systems and parliamentary systems, they're not, um, they're in the margins. But now, they have been mainstream. And I like that. We need constitutional reform because the 1987 constitution is a very infirmed constitution. Infirm, parang infirmary, di ba? May sakit. Sobrang dami niyang sakit. At hindi mo pwedeng... Porque may sakit ka din sa, ano, sa may lapay mo. Yan bang lapay lang pakikialaman mo? Pakialaman mo the whole organism. Hindi mo pwedeng lang economics ang tinututukan mo tapos yan lang ang ina-amend mo. Mali, mali, mali. How many times, Eileen, ako nag-appear dyan sa mga committee hearing 10,000 times. Ha? Ano mga ginastos ko dyan sa taxi, papunta-punta dyan sa Senate. Layo ah, kaya niyan, no? Nakikinig ba yung mga iyan? Hindi ah. O eh, bakit sila ngayon nagkakaroon ng problema sa party list? Hindi nakinig eh. Ano yung party list? Ba, si, ano ba si Carlos? Pakadaldal naman yan eh. Paano naman? Nagsasalita ka, nagte-text, nag-aano, nagte-telepono, o kaya pinapadala yung kung sino, staff lang niya. O, eh, bakit? Hindi nakinig. They don't listen to scholars like us and ayan, ang na, napuna nila. No? Ang nakakahinat na nila. We need constitutional reforms. You need structural reforms. Otherwise, we will have more of the same thing. You need to shift from a unitary system to a federal system because the federal states now will be the pivotal actors in our national development. We need to shift our parliamentary system. When you have a parliamentary system, there will be no question about term limits. You can be elected member of parliament until mamatay ka na dyan sa ano, as member of parliament. How about leadership? You can be prime minister, you can be chancellor. How long was uh, uh, Merkel a chancellor? Hindi ba? Close to 20 years, 16 years and chancellor. Why? Because she continued to be elected by the Bundestag and she continued to have the majority in the Bundestag. Which brings me to the closing argument about why we need to change our political structure. Guys, you know how the vetting system happened here. Yung mga iba nag-proclaim na lang ng sarili nila, sige mag ako for president. Huh? Independent lang ako. Abay, lahat ng promesa mo you need a political party to vet who the candidates are because the candidates can only promise if they have the political party behind them. Palagay mo ba si Boris Johnson, yung uh, British uh, premier? Siya nagpromesa siya na, you know, when you elect me, I'll take Britain out of the European Union. No, it was really the promise of the Conservative Party. And when the Conservative Party won in the House of Commons, he took Britain out of the EU. This is what it means to have a political party backing up your promises. Otherwise, laway lang yan. You need a political party to make it happen in the House, in the lower chamber, 300 of them, and make it happen in the upper chamber, 24 of them. But we have a very, very broken political party system, and ang solution dyan is a parliamentary system because parliamentary system is party government. I think I will end there. I think I have given you enough provocative uh, things to think about, and um, I'm ready for the Q&A. Thank you.
Wow, that was a wonderful lecture this morning. It's very rich, very eye-opening, and I believe we there are so many points that we can take home after this lecture. But of course, we are going to go to our um, open forum um, for our participants uh, joining us via Zoom. You can send your questions to our speaker by typing them in the Q&A window. Meanwhile, for those in Facebook, you may send your questions in the comment section. Questions will be collated and moderated to ensure relevance to the scope of the presentation. So with that uh, very rich discussion this morning on the elections, maybe um, we, we may, we, maybe our uh, executive committee from the College of Public Affairs would like to um, ask a question or do we, um, do we go to the Q&A na kaagad? Um, Alright, sige. Ako na lang sige. Siguro, Dr. Carlos, ako yung isang una mo nang mag, ano, no, magtanong. One of the things that is very interesting in your lecture this morning is yung mention mo about the personality of the candidates, which is sometimes we're, um, sometimes we're looking at very important naman din yung accomplishments ng uh, ating um, candidates, but the personality. If we are going to talk about the personality, what are some of the few things that we need to watch out for in terms of siguro, lalo na sa presidente? Well, immediately it should be the decision-making style because the chief executive will decide every day on domestic issues, on foreign policy issues, or a combination of both. So, Pay attention to the decision-making style. And um, I think the average age of our presidential aspirants are uh, in their 40s. That means fairly stable na yung kanilang attributes, which means you're not talking of 16, 17 years old. You're talking of people in their 40s. And that means their attributes are fairly stable, meaning stable, less likely to change. So pay attention to the decision-making styles. Magtanong-tanong ka oh, bilang researcher. Uh, paano ba itong mag-decision nito? Ay, uh, ito bang taon na to ay madaling naguguluhan pag may crisis situation, nagnaninigaw, na, no? nagtuturo-turo, ng ganyan. Or is this person uh, can in fact conduct himself or herself with equanimity, think about the situation at hand and make a decision. The decision-making style is very, very crucial uh, to examine in our uh, those who are threatening to lead us. Very well said, ma'am. Um, those who are who, who can stand really under pressure, no, is very that's very important, especially that um, leadership at the national level. You're not just talking about um, your constituents or the citizens. You're also talking about international relations. Um, with that, ma'am, um, how about uh, in terms of foreign policy? Um, sometimes we're just looking inside, dun sa sitwasyon ng Pilipinas, no. But how about looking outside? What uh, what can you emphasize on that na parang dapat ito tingnan din namin bilang botante? Conceptually, while it is true that, you know, we disaggregate foreign and domestic policy, magkadugtong yan eh. Diba? Hindi mo naman po pwedeng sabihin na, ayan, nag-export ka ng labor, domestic labor na ano. Kanya ka nag-export kasi very high ang unemployment dito. Nakita mo yung dugtong ng domestic at saka foreign. Okay. Um, itong pinag-aawayan natin ngayon na South China Sea, magkadugtong din yan kasi tubig natin yan. Eh. Diba? Teritoryo natin yan. And pareho tayo ng China and other claimant countries, signatory tayo and we ratify the UNCLOS. So that means we are governed by the same legal framework. So hindi pwedeng China ay sasakupin niya yan at sasabihin niya, akin lahat ito ah, yung kanyang ginawang nine dash line. And that is what the arbitral tribunal award uh, declared. By the way, there is no award. It is simply declaring na yung nine dash line ng China walang katuturan, walang basihan. So it did not award anything to anybody. And you know, in international politics, uh, kapag wala kang puwersa to support any declaration, eh wala laway lang yan. Kaya wag ka nang mag-asta-asta dyan na you know, may magagawa ka sa China kasi pipitikin ka lang yan. You know, that even militarily, eh, mukhang mas advanced pa siya ngayon sa US na nag, nag, ano, na nagpupumilit na siya pa lang ang sole superpower, which is not the case anymore. Di ba? So yan eh, makikita mo yung talagang prueba ng metal ng leadership is how he or she is able to link together our domestic concerns as a defense ally of the US and our concerns vis-a-vis -vis China. 
Kasi for as long as the Mutual Defense Treaty, 1951, ratified in 1952, continues to be in force with its legs, BFA, Visiting Forces Agreement, EDCA, ano, no? uh, MILSA, ang dami niyan legs eh. For as long as it is in operation, we continue to be the defense ally of the U.S. Nalimutan na ba natin yun? Under the EDCA, there are five military bases in the, in the Philippines na merong mga ano, U.S. military. Hindi ba? Inano natin yun eh. Uh, we committed to that. Okay, ano nyo nga, kalkalkin nyo nga ang EDCA, defense, uh, ano, Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement. Kalkalin nyo yun, makikita ninyo that in five military camps, and they're all an open the thing, you know, it's not anything secret, there are military, uh, U.S. military forces there. And of course, the, the most important one is the one facing the South China Sea, yung isa nasa Palawan. Diba? Tignan nyo nga yung geography nyo, diba? All right. Thank you, ma'am. Um, I think uh, Dr. Eileen Lapitan is raising her hand and would like to ask a question. Thanks, Sam. Uh, thank you again, uh, uh, Dr. Carlos, for your very uh, lively and uh, very informative. I miss you mga ganyang lectures. Po. Uh, um, I take it, ma'am, that from your talk, uh, in all places, UP, uh, UP should be the place na talagang malaya tayo to express what we believe in. And as you know, uh, some of us teach and uh, some of us, when we do research, we all, there are people looking up to us as role models. How, do you, how would you advise us, academics, in the long group, na yon, how to balance our duties as government employees na medyo sinasabihan din kami to, to you know, uh, be a little bit uh, controlled in our uh, political statements? How could we balance our duties as government employees with our freedom to express our political sentiments or in some cases, even our political color? Um, uh, would you advise us to, you know, exercise our freedom more or uh, to maybe go on the... Uh, Uh, what do you call this, um, yung maingat na, na direction? Well, Eileen, I'm not 75 for nothing. I'm a survivor, which means prudence is the key word to my survival. Sometimes I really have to bend over backwards until mababali na yung likod ko. During martial law, sinabi ko sa chairman namin, wag mo akong pagturuin ng Philippine government kasi mapipreso ako. Kasi makikita ng estudyante, nagkukunyari lang ako sa sinasabi ko. Di ba nagtanim si Marcos ng mga estudyante sa klase natin? No? Nagtatanim siya dyan. And uh, tanga na lang yung ano, guro kung hindi niya nalalaman na nakakrukat ito, nakadiretso yung kanyang, ano, yung kanyang uh, likod, na military siya. So yung ang isa doon na history professor, and I'm sure you know him, hindi na natin siya na-iname, abay minura niya si, ano, si Imelda Marcos sa klase niya, ayun. Doon siya sa krame, nasira ulo niya. Nagbibilang siya ng ano, kinakausap niya yung bato. No, I had to compromise because I had two young children at the time of martial law. Kapapangan ako pa lang noon sa second child ko. And I said, no, I have to compromise. Ayoko magturo ng Philippine government. Yes, you compromise a lot. But yes, but this part of our work as a scholar scientist. Di ba? But we, we continue to do research. But we are also saying, parang noon si Angelo Reyes, noon siya naging Secretary of National Defense, wala ang ginawa kundi insultuhin ako sa Execom. O sabi ko, putres ka. I'm full professor 12 nung sinekond ako dito sa DND. Sino ka ba, ha? Of course, lalo siyang nagalit sa akin. Kasi sabi, ito si Carlos, napakayabang yan. Kaya nung nag-exit call ako sa kanya, sabi niya, you know, Dr. Carlos, you're a very intelligent woman, da, 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 like that. Kaya lang you're not a team player. O sabi ko, putres, murahin ko na nga ito, total paalis na ako. Ay ko, ah, oo nga, no, hindi ako team player kasi hindi ako kasama sa sabukan ng pera nyo, hindi ako magnanakaw. I'm sure kung lalaki ako, binuntal niya ako, eh, buntalin ko din siya. Hello? Oh, yan eh. Let us keep our integrity as a scholar scientist. Alam nyo, kanya ako nakakaduro-duro. Nung president ako ng National Defense College, sabi ko, tiga UP ako ha, bawal magnanakaw ha. Kasi gusto ko pakita ang UP hindi magnanakaw. Believe me ha. Sabi nga na isa doon, ma'am, alam mo ba yung 4 million na ano mo doon? Yung para sa training mo, seminar. Sa iyo na yun bilang presidente. Wa, bakit? Eh, kasi ma'am, yung training na yan, wala. Gawa na yung kung saan mo ginawa yung training. Sa Cagayan de Oro, meron ka ng listahan ng, ano doon, ng mga participants. Alam na alam mo yan, do you know corruption? Kaya mo yung matitrace kasi insider ka. Kung nasa labas ka, wala lang. So, ang sagot ko sa long-winded ano, answer sa iyo, Eileen, A lot of prudence. I know we are supposed to, uh, how do you call it, to mouth the, the policy of the government, but do it with a lot of prudence, work around it, 
And let us not declare our, of course, we're professors. We profess, no? Pero wag tayo magsabi, hoy, elect nyo to si Bongbong Marcos, ha? O si Pacquiao, ano? Wag nating sabihan yan. Because we are, meron ta- we are, ano, eh, people of authority in the classroom. Pabayaan natin yung mga kata- kabataan mag-reach ng kanilang conclusion. Yung choice nila ay ganyan. Diba? O people are asking us na, ayan, si Angelo Reyes, ginanyan na naman ako, Dr. Kala, sino why I hate the UP? Kasi they manufacture communism. Sabi ko, wah! Eh ako pa naman ang host niya. Siyempre, hindi ko siya pinahiya. Kasi kung hindi talaga, sabi ko, teka muna. O isa communist, definition of terms ka, wala na nga komunista. Tayo na lang ang gumagamit ng term na yon. Hello, yung mga so-called communist eh, are out and out capitalist. Kanya, ay, naku, Diyos ko. Miski definition of terms, talo. Talo tayo, no? So, yeah. Let us continue to be scholar scientists and let us participate in the building of our nation. Diba? Kanya ako, gustong gusto ko, Aileen, ituro yung regional integration and world security. Kasi papakita ko why ASEAN is important, why the European Union is important, why the Quad will be important. Because a collective, corny as it may sound, is saan ka ba nakakita? Meron ka bang walis tingting na isa lang piraso yan, gawin mong toothpick? Hindi ba kailangan siya i-bunch? Na nakita niyo yung ASEAN logo, hindi ba parang bunch siya ng, ano ko nga ba yun, dayami ba yun, whatever it is. Because yung collective stance, the collective stance of UP students, UP faculty, UP admin and researchers, it is much, much more powerful than, you know, the stance of one. So yes, it's very difficult. We're government employees, we're in a state university, but remember, Eileen, we're cloaked by the academic freedom. Anything and everything that we profess within the walls of our classroom, we can shoot off our mouths, no? We can talk about Karl Marx until hell freezes over. Sabi na, oh, bakit? Nag-produce kayo ng mga ano, Rafael Bailosis, mga Reyes. Ano na sabi ko? Wah, si Rafael Bailosis ang nasa estudyante ko siya. Hindi nga siya nagkikibo yung bata na yan. Of course, he went to the mountains. That's his choice. Palagay mo ba, yaya niya ako? Nasabihin ko, hoy, Rafaela, huwag ka niya magpunta sa mountain at ano, dahil ma, ano, yung, yung buhay mo ay mauutas dyan. Of course, he's still alive. O si Harry Roque. Ayan si Harry Roque, napakakulit niya. Hindi pa nga ako tapos ng sentence ko, nakataas na agad ng kamay. No? Oh, where is he now? Of course, he's gunning for a position somewhere. So we produce all kinds, di ba? Nagpo-produce tayo ng kriminal, magnanakaw, korap. But we also produce, you know, leaders, no? Leaders who became dictators later on, and uh, who uh, who got sick and died. We produce everything. Eh. Kanya nga tayo sa UP, no? wag na lang tayo magmayabang kasi alam na natin yun. Ano? Kanya lang, let us put up the flag of being scholar scientists. Yan ang ating contribution sa ano. Hindi lang sa Pilipinas, kundi sa region at sa mundo. Tama ba, Aileen? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. We will take it to heart. I could see a lot of our colleagues... Uh in the plenary also so i'm sure uh, people are already taking note of that i think the the keyword here is prudence uh, and we really need to balance no our courage also and also our commitment to our science uh, uh, with all that so and of course our love for our country thank you ma'am for answering the question um over to you sam thank you dr Eileen lapitan very well um i've also noted that prudence it's very important yung prudence natin. Integrity as well, I think um, Dr. Carlos has mentioned that. And one of the things that um, floated during your discussion, um, uh, Dr. Carlos, is yung conviction. Whatever you, uh, what you are believing in, I think you should be living it by example. And I think we are seeing it clearly right now with Dr. Carlos as she is speaking. Now let me shoot the next question from Feed Philippines. How do we empower the mass to make more informed choices in their presidentials and to demand stronger or better leaders to run? With great difficulty, Samantha. But you know, it can be done. I'm as old as the Republic. 1946 ako pinanganak eh. So, ako, isang pa ako, malapit na ako mamatay, no? Nasa libingan na. Pero tayo, the Republic is still a teenager. Hindi na sabi niya, sino ako? You know, parang gusto niya nagpapatiwakal at ang dami niyang errors in judgment. But that's how it is. We're a very young democracy. Hindi naman porke, ano, young tayo, may joker tayo. No, we'll get there. And the, the best way to really, the greatest accelerator to social mobility is education. Education. You know, kami, pito kami sa pamilya. Talagang inano kami ng, inaraga kami ng tatay ko is an accountant and nanay ko is a public school teacher. Minsan sabay-sabay kami sa, ano, sa, na nag-aaral, no? May butas na yung, ano, yung sapatos ko. Na, 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 pag nagdaan ako sa putik, pati yung pa ako, ano, basa, lagyan ko lang siya newspaper. Sabi yung tatay ko, oh, 
hindi ka patoka pang binin sapatos ha. Kanya ngayon, ano ginagawa ko sa manta? Di siyempre, hoarder ako ng sapatos kasi <laughs> nagdaob ako nung, <laughs> nung maliit pa ako. <laughs> Side issue lang yun. But yes, siguro kadugtong niya na no, yung prudence, yung sinabi ni Aileen kanina. Alam mo tayo, we can only declare I know sentences, which is what scientists declare. I know. This is the most dangerous sentence that you can declare. If we can defend the predicate. If we cannot defend the predicate, let us shut up, no? And the predicate will depend on the data that we as scientists, Eileen, are going to generate as researchers, di ba? So I say, Samantha, ha? sabi ng boyfriend mo, Samantha, I love you forever. Sabi mo, Samantha, sampaling kaya kita. Alam mo, sabi ni Dr. Carlos, wala nga forever dahil walang empirical reference yan. Sabi mo sa akin, Samantha, I love you today. Bukas, ha, tanungin mo uli ako. Hindi ba ganun talaga yung... Ano, yung love, di ba? Every day you work on it, Courtney man, pero totoo, di ba? The most dangerous statement that you can make is the, the the statement that starts with I know. Sino nagsabing I know that Iraq has weapons of mass destruction? Eh, di ba yung pangalawang Bush? Tapos sabi niya, ay mali, tapos na ang dami nang namatay ng mga Iraqis at Amerikano. I know statements are very, very powerful. Kaya unless you are um, ready to defend your predicate, please. You shut up. Pag wala kang data, shut up ka. And when the data are colliding, then you tell your policy makers, no, ginagawa ko na to for so many years eh. Sorry ha, colliding yung data eh. Bahala ka na diyan, ikaw na mag-choose kung anong data ang mas gwapo sa iyo, which is a harder evidence. And many times colliding ang evidence, di ba? It's not the case na, yeah, or the evidence is just pointing to one trajectory. Minsan talaga nagbubungguan siya. What can you do? That's the nature of science. That's the reason why we don't our, we don't end our sentences in period. We end them in exclamation point, in ellipses, in question mark. That is the nature of science because we're not bigots, you know? Oh, hindi, eh. I want to magpari na lang kayo mag magmongha o magmadre or I don't know. You should not be in the university. Diyan ka na lang sa ano, yung where you end your sentences with a period. We end our sentences in wonderment in ellipses in thus far you know thus far this is what we know thus far we know na sabi ng Pfizer bigyan mo na naman kami ng fourth booster just me butas butas na tong ano ko arm ko sa dami ng booster ano nanghihilo na yung mga antibodies ko o oh, hala sige fourth booster na naman pero Pfizer siguraduhin mo may syensya yan ha? baka nagkakapera ka lang dahil sa amin na and ba? <laughs> so we ask, teka muna. Fourth booster na naman. Nakakayamot na kayo ah. Parang every two weeks na lang nagpapa-inject ako dito sa UP gym. Diba? All right. Um with that ma'am, um no na um isa dun sa mga na-mention mo kanina yung importance na education. And I think most of our viewers right now, we have 169 participants na here on Zoom and around 50 or 60 on Facebook. Many of us are actually educated. Or yung iba na nakatapos pa nga ng UP, no? just like me. Um, but how can we deepen conversations about uh, leadership, about elections, without yun, uh, aside from yung prudence, no? um, how can we actually deepen conversation especially within our families so, or within with our friends when it comes to elections without actually uh, imposing on them or um pilitin sila na iboto tong kandidatong sinusuportahan don't impose your view Samantha you argue like a scholar would build up compelling arguments no they can only say no or not no sino ka ba pastor ka ba na kailangan mo mag-convert ng tao no Ilahad mo yung premise mo. Ito yun na ah, one, two, three, four, five. Either you accept it. Imagine pati mga kapatid mo, magulang mo eh. Kakaawayin mo o kaya yung mga friends mo sa Facebook, dinidilit ka, di ba? Eh ano ngayon, good riddance, hello, we were not friends in the first instance. Kung yung political differences natin eh, hinahalang mo yan, no? Kanya, guys ha, ah, a guide to you. Mahirap makapag-asawa ng hindi UP. Kasi sa umaga, ano ba yung didiscuss mo? Si Nora Honor ba? O, ayaw ko kung sino yung mga artista dyan. Ayaw ko nga i-discuss yung artista. Gusto ko i-discuss yung nangyayari sa, ano, sa Ukraine. no? But you know, I'm exaggerating to make a point. The point is, si Teres Paribus, all things being equal, dapat pareho yung intellectual level ninyo nung inyong partner in life. And by the way, because I just finished a book on population aging, ah, kayong mga kabataan na ah, ayaw nyo mag-asawa, ayaw nyo mag-asawa, ayaw nyo mag-anak. Teka nga, sino ba magbabayad ng pension ninyo? Pakitanong nga. Hello? Wala. 
I'll take that to heart, ma'am. <laughs> but uh, right now, I can see that Ding Bakong is, is raising her hand. Maybe she has a question. Yes, uh, Dr. Carlos, maraming salamat po for a very passionate and incisive uh, sharing of your ideas. Uh, I'm very much interested on the concept of uh, political psychology, uh, the psychology part where uh, we, we try to determine what are the philosophies and beliefs of a person. Now, earlier you said, of course, that we produce different kinds of people, no? from criminals uh, to, to yeah, good leaders. And... Um, our, our third topic actually is about uh, capacity building and forging leaders who would have the passion to serve and prioritize um, the country or the organization. No? And my question really is, in your years of experience, uh, how, how, can we, how, how do you best uh, influence the development of the, this kind of philosophy and belief system? Well, um, of course, with great difficulty, Rowena, no? Kanya lang, itanim mo kasi yung basics eh. Ba't hindi ako nagnakaw nung nasa defense ako? Ang dami ko. Alam ko na kasi magnakaw ng piso eh. Kailangan pito kami kasama yung resident auditor. Rowena, ba't hindi ako nagnakaw? Una, kasi nga gusto ko ipakita ang UP hindi magnanakaw. Oh. Pangalawa, full professor 12 na ako, magnanakaw pa ako. I have the highest rank in the university. Sirain ko yung ano ko, binilled ko for how many years? Pangatlo, natakot ako mapreso. Di ba? So, Ang kailangan mo dyan, you just establish the basics and make sure na you establish the importance of the integrity of the person. Bakit ako nakakapagsalita ng ganito with so much bravura, nakakaduro ako? Kasi hindi marumi yung ano ko eh. Siyempre, poor pa rin ako. Hindi naman poor, pero, you know, hindi mayaman. Sabi, sabi ko nga, no, Samantha, sana nga nagdakaw na ako nasa defense ako para yung tinamaan na bahay ko sa Tagaytay na 20 years na atang ginagawa, eh, hindi pa matapos-tapos putres, no? But yes, ganyan talaga eh. You make a choice. But what brought about the integrity of my spirit? And siyempre, tatay ko, no, palagi niya, may hawak na kawayan, hindi kawayan, ano, hangir. Kung ano yung mahawakan niya, pinampapalo sa amin, ano, belt niya. Yan ang nanay ko naman, sunod-sunod naman sa amin, Rowena. Daladala naman niya yung big spay po rap para mag, ano. Ngayon, Rowena, itry mo nga paluin yung anak mo. Hindi e, i-demanda ka niyan. Things are different. But there are many, many other ways of establishing the integrity of a person. And you start, maliit pa lang siya. Two, three, sampalin mo na agad kung sasagot-sagot sa'yo. Of course, hindi naman sasampalin. Ibig sabihin, hello, nakatabingi ka na ha. Itatayo kita ngayon dahil gusto ko upright na person ka. And that one will become an adult. Diba? Will become an adult. Huwag mo siyang nakaano siya, baloktot na siya, tapos adult na siya. Mababali yan. Preschool pa lang, turuan mo na. That's why, lifelong learning, di ba? So, preschool pa, kanya nga yung, just ko, yung, uh, we go to pagdidivide, di ba, ng TESDA, DEP, ED, sa CHED, maling, 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 mali, no? Kaya pag nag-interview kayo ng presidensya, pag tanongin nyo nga ang kanilang damdami sa EDCOM 2, kailangan ipagsama natin yung tatlo na yan, hindi pwedeng hiwa-hiwalay. You know, di pwede nakahiwalay tayo sa university tapos yung nandun sa K-12 eh, puro mga kamangmanga ng mga tinuturo sa mga bata and the preschool of course nakita nyo ba yung preschool yung aking apo noon na ano, sinusundo ko sa ano lang siya siguro 4 years old lang siya na, na, nandinig ko tinutudyo nila yung anak yung uh, kapat ano nila uh, classmate nila sabi, oy si Taba si Taba bakit yung katabaan inintroduce mo na agad dun sa bata 4 years old pa lang Sino nag-introduce niyan? Teris. Eh di siyempre, yung adult, siya yung nagsabi sa iyo, huya, huwag mong kaibiganin sa ganito kasi hindi mo ba nakita, negro yan. Di ba? Tayo yung nag-introduce ng discrimination sa bata. Kanya, preschool pa lang, ayusin nyo na ang inyong mga ano, no? Mga young people. Eh hindi yung nasa university na, wala na yan, matigas na yung ulo niyan. And yet, Angelo Reyes expects us to produce saints. Hello, Malaysia. Kanya lang, is gone already, so hindi na siya makasagot. So, wag na natin siyang banggitin. So, Rowena, na piho ko ba yung ano mo? Yung uh, gusto mo sabihin? Alam mo tayo yung mga guru, ah. Hindi porky guru tayo. Di ba hero tayo? Guys, once upon a time, sweldo lang natin, 30,000. Ang inuuwi ko nun, 5,000. Ewan ko nga ba kung paano ako nakasurvive sa 5,000 sa dami ng utang ko, no? Yung mga minus-minus. Pero ngayon, Nagturo ko ang puso ko kasi yung full professor 12, parang 200,000 ang sweldo. Ah, may gagawa tayo ng legislation para maayos yan. Tiga, 
Ba't ba tayo napunta sa school to? Sorry ah. Oo. Okay. So I guess uh, it's your passion ma'am na as a teacher din na we are to mold yun nga to forge leaders eh. Our next generation they're going to be our next leaders din. Um definitely. So it's very it's a very important thing to talk about. So uh, din yes, din tama din. Ka, You should be a major factor in the life of your student. Para sabihin niya, ma'am, Samantha, alam mo, natuwa ako dun sa, ano, sa uh, diniscuss mo to, sa rami-rami ng mga subjects ko. Ito na alala ko. Di ba? Ego trip yan. Diba? <laughs> Pero yes, ibig sabihin, nagmarka ka dun sa ulo ng bata na to. Di ba? Na ano, wow, I became part of your scholarship. Sige, carry on. And, ano, mentor other scholars. You cannot pay me back. You have to pay forward, di ba? And uh, pursue the scholarship uh, uh, what path. Diba? You cannot pay back uh, your guru. It's part of the cycle of life. Pay it forward. Okay, Din Wen, do you have additional um, comments? Thank you very much, Dr. Carlos. All right, thank you, Din Wen. And um, we will have our last question for this morning before we close our open forum. Um, coming from a largely multi-party regime, how can the country transition into a two-party system where political ideology and not personality politics politics is central to political exercise? One of the infirmities of the 1987 Constitution is to put the party system there in the Constitution. Mm-hmm. Ang party system, whether it's one party, two party, multi-party, you allow the dynamics of the system to bring it about. Hindi mo siya nilalagay sa Constitution. Ano? Uh, kaya tingnan mo si Angela Merkel. She was the head of a coalition of the SPD, CSU, CDU. Eh, pag nilagay mo dun sa basic law ng Germany na dapat multi-party siya, palagay mo ba pwede siya mag-head ng coalition? No. Mali na naman eh. Iyan na naman, isang sakit ng 1987 Constitution. Don't ever put the political party system there because it is really the dynamics of the system that will bring it about, whether one party or two party or multi-party. There is nothing virtuous about any one of them. The parliamentary system, which will help us a pivot, the political party, will really make that decision. And as I said, there will be no question of term limits. You can be an MP, a member of parliament, until mamatay ka na doon sa parliament. And you can be a chancellor for as long as you have the, uh, the majority in the house. And why is this so important? Your life, your political life, it starts when you become a young member of the political party. Palagay niyo ba si Tony Blair ng Labour Party? Biglaan na lang yan naging prime minister ng Britain. Hindi, ah, parang 16, 17 years old pa lang yan, bata na yan. Pumasok na siya sa Labour Party. Di pwedeng, bigla ka na lang galing sa kawayan eh, bumulusok ka na lang sa national, ano? Sa national realm, ano? Tapos na, na, na sa national position. Tayo magsasuffer sa kabubuhan nila because, wow, well, they're studying on the job. Di ba? So, Yan eh. To go back to Samantha's question, how do we make sure that the kinds of leadership uh, that we elect will have the qualities, the attributes of leaders that we want? With great difficulty. Ba mag-research kayo? Ito bang ano, leader na to eh? Ano, mag-research kayo dun sa uh, key informants nila. People who had been their chief of staff, etc. Like, ang dami ko siyempre, ang tagal-tagal ko na nakikipag-work sa Senate, ang dami dyan mga karumalduma lang ugali na talagang hindi ko i-elect sa May 9, no? Kasi meron akong inside information. That inside information is not a secret, no? Ito talaga magnanakaw to, eh. Pero kunyari siya, ano siya, ha? may halo siya sa dulo, ha? Pero magnanakaw talaga yan, korap, no? And uh, yes, like a scholar scientist would do, mag-research ka, Samantha, huwag kang mag-ano dyan sa chismis-chismis na yan, eh, ganito, no? And by the way, their love, love, yung love, ano, ano to? Yung love life nila, wala kayong pakailam doon, miski lima asawa niya at sampu yung boyfriend niya. Uh, so long as it does not intrude into decision making, of course, I'm sure nakita niyo naman sa South Korea yung napreso doon dahil yung kanyang best friend eh, parang binigyan niya ng mga ano, kontra. So, something else, you know. So, pay attention to the decision making style of the leader and siguro yung sinabi ko uh, kanina kay Rowena, yung mapping out the belief system. Alam niyo malalaman niyo yung estudyante ni Alexander Alexander George sa Stanford because all of them wrote about the operational code, the operational code of uh, uh, Lyndon Johnson, the operational code of Mahatma Gandhi, etc. No, eh kung na- namit ko siya earlier, I would have written on him as for my dissertation, but I also wrote in political psychology on Ramon Magsaysay and President Marcos. No, and at the time, of course, Magsaysay was long dead. 
but at the time also Marcos was already ailing and syempre ang mga in-interview ko nun, si Bongbong Marcos in-interview ko si Imelda in-interview ko si Amy in-interview ko din si June Magsaysay kasi teenager na siya nung ano presidente yung tatay niya only to validate my findings in-interview ko sila after I have generated my data Wow. Thank you, Dr. Carlos. This is a very rich uh, discussion. It's a good exchange of thoughts um, from our colleagues and from you, of course. And um, I would just like to resonate how important it is for us um, as um, people in the academe and for all our viewers this morning to take note how uh, important not just the leadership style, but also yung personality ng leaders when we consider our when we consider our um, um our votes on on May 9, 2022. Now, um, 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 I just want to, of course, I'm I'm actually in awe of all the things that you have shared this morning. But we have to uh, come to a close to this first part of the uh, uh, opening ceremonies for the anniversary special, and so. Um, with that, in the interest of time, we have to end our open forum and hopefully many of our viewers today or participants were satisfied with the discussion this morning. And I hope her answers, all the things that she discussed with us, the points that she shared uh, about leadership will resonate with us as we make the decision on May 9. And now as a token of our appreciation for the time and knowledge Dr. Carlos shared with us, the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, College of Public Affairs and Development would like to award this uh, plaque of appreciation to Dr. Clarita R. Carlos in grateful recognition for serving as the guest speaker during the, the CIPAF 24th anniversary celebration with the theme Forging Leaders for Institutional Governance and Development. Given this 28th day of January 2022 at the College of Public Affairs and Development, University of the Philippines, Los Baños, College Batong Malaki, Los Baños, Laguna. Signed, uh, Rowena D. Tibacongis, Dean of SIPA. Wow, thank you very much for this plaque of appreciation. Pero uh, sa susunod, ah, ayoko na ng plaque kasi punong-puno na yung bahay ko niya. No? Itinggal ko kaya yan. <laughs> Guys, sa susunod naman, halaman naman ang irigalo nyo sa akin. Yung bang, ang favorite ko ngayon, bamboo. Okay. Yan na, halaman naman ang irigalo mo sa akin next time. Ano ang favorite mo? Ay, favorite ko po. Kasi, bamboo. Kasi, oh. alam mo, nung nasa National Defense College, sinetap ko yung bamboo setum. Yung iba-ibang species ba ng bamboo, no? And uh, unfortunately, yung mga military dun sa Lagom, eh, parang pinutol niya yung mga bambong tinanim ko. Sabi niya, bakit daw, Rowena? Makalat daw yung dahon. Parang gusto mo kong magpatiwakal. Hello? Guys, uh, thank you din sa plaque. Eh. I'm sure ang ganda-ganda niya, no? Sa susunod, pwede halaman ng ibigay niyo sa akin. Okay? Mamatid po, ma'am. Sige po. <laughs> no, yeah. that Noted, ma'am. Don't worry, UPLB will be there <laughs> for you. Ano pa ba? At kami ay ano, kolehiyo ng agrikultura at saka ng forestry. Oh, yes. Right. Ano ha? And guys, uh, I really enjoy this conversation. It's really like a conversation, no? Kaya lang wala naman nag-challenge sa aking mga sinabi. Siguro another time, no? <laughs> Maybe Sige. when you come to si Pap, ma'am, somebody will oh, challenge oh. your ideas. <laughs> All right. Thank you po ulit, Dr. Carlos, and to everyone who made this morning's discussion possible. Before we proceed to the next part of the program, we will have an eight-minute break. You may use this time to answer the evaluation form, which will be shared in our chat box and comment section on Facebook. You may also use this to refill your favorite drink, get the water, uh, stretch out, and have your bio break. We will return to you shortly. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Thank you. Thank you po. Oh.